Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we are talking about compositing inside of Fusion and some of the basics there. So if you've never composited before ever, you've never used Fusion ever, this is a great video for you. Great little intro. Let's go. I have this shot here, this little uh, aerial shot. Let's say we want to do some fanciness to it. Basically any kind of fanciness happens inside of the Fusion page. To bring a shot from the timeline into the Fusion page, all you have to do is be over it with the playhead here in the timeline and then click on Fusion. What that'll do is open up our shot in Fusion. Yes, exactly. If you're not familiar with Fusion at all, I have made a couple videos on just how nodes work and everything. We're gonna try and hit some of the basics here, but if you want some more info, here it is. So when you're talking about compositing, compositing basically means adding a couple of different images together. It's changing something about an image. When you think about compositing, um, if you're going to like photo bash a couple of things together inside of Photoshop, that would be compositing. Putting text over a background is compositing. Basically combining two different things would be compositing in the digital image realm. So let's talk about basically how that works inside of Fusion. There's a bunch of different ways that you can get an image inside of Fusion. You can either take one that already exists from the media pool, but you can go up here to the media pool like this, and you can drag an image down into your node flow, and that makes a media in node. A media in node is just literally like a piece of footage or an image or some kind of media that you bring in. Makes sense, right? And by default, if we grab a shot from the timeline, it makes a media in node for us. Again, if you're not familiar with nodes, a node is really just an instruction that tells Fusion to do one thing. So right now we are bringing in a piece of media and it goes along this flow right here, all the way over to the right where it says media out. This node also has one job and it just says, render this out to the timeline. So right now what we're doing is picking up a piece of media and putting it back in the timeline. And all of the fanciness and everything needs to happen in here. So if we're going to composite something, it happens in between these nodes, basically. One of the easiest and most fun composites is to add fog, which is what we're going to do right now. Again, you can grab a piece of media from the media pool. You could even drag stuff in here from an explorer window, and it works kind of the same way. And if you hit one or two on the keyboard with a node selected, it will show up in one of these viewers here. And either the left viewer, if you hit one, or the right viewer if you hit two. So it's a great way to kind of preview stuff depending on what node you select. What I like to do is have our media out node in the second viewer, so I just select that and hit two. And then we can preview other stuff by selecting a node and hitting one on the keyboard to load it into this left viewer. So instead of bringing in a piece of media, what I'm gonna do is generate a piece of media because there are different ways to make things. So like think about if you want to make text, you would make that inside of your app. You wouldn't necessarily bring that in from outside. So we could make text just by going to this toolbar here and grabbing this T and dragging it down. And that makes a text node. Again, this is just a node that says, hey, make some text. If we hit one on the keyboard, we can preview it here. And with the node selected, we can go up here to the inspector in the upper right hand corner click on that and that brings up the properties for basically whatever we have selected inside of resolve. So for the text, I'll type some text and we can see here in the left hand viewer that it actually brings up that text. So we're just previewing that here in the left hand viewer, but how do we put the text over our shot? Remember we are compositing, right? We're putting something over something else. Remember we're working with nodes and each node has one job. So what we need is a node that does the job of putting something over something else, which happens to be called a merge node, and it's right here. So I'll grab this merge node, drag that down to our flow, and it looks all intimidating because it has all these colors on it. But here's what we're gonna do. We can break a connection here in Fusion by just clicking on this line when it turns blue, and then we can take the little output, this little gray square, and we can connect it to other stuff. So I'm gonna connect this to the merge, and we can see it's connected by moving it back and forth. And we can grab the output of the merge, and put that into media out. What this is gonna do is say, hey, the first thing that's connected to me is gonna be the background, and then we're going to put out that image to our media out. So right now, what's happening is nothing. Nothing's really changed because we're telling this to put something over our media, and what we're telling to put over our media is nothing. <laughs> and that's what we're getting. It's like that song, probably. So let's take this text and put it over our media. So this green input, if we go over it with our mouse, it says merge one dot foreground. If we grab the output of our text and connect it to that foreground input, check out what happens. Oh, text over the background. That's compositing, man. That's compositing. You put something over something else. And really the main thing you need to learn is this merge node. This merge node is the bee's knees for putting stuff together. In fact, if you select this merge node and you go up to the inspector, 
you can adjust all the fancy things about how something goes over other things, right? Stuff like the blend, which is just the opacity, right? How opaque it is. Things like the size and where it is and the angle and whether you flip it or not, right? All of those things you can control inside of the merge node. So if you can get your head around that, pretty easy. Let's add our fog. Get out of here, text. I don't want you in this. We want fog, man. So we're gonna generate fog just like we did with the text, but instead of grabbing this T, we're gonna grab the one next to it, which is called fast noise, which is basically just make some fog real quick. And I'll select this and hit one on the keyboard, and that'll bring it up here in the left-hand viewer. And honestly, it looks pretty good just out of the box. Looks pretty good out of the box. Let's grab the output of our fast noise and drag that onto the green part of our merge and look what happens. Whoosh, magic happens, yay. Now it's a foggy shot, look at that. It's a foggy boy, isn't that great? And of course, if we want this fog to be a little bit different, we can select its node here and go up to the inspector and adjust things about it. So I can push up the detail a little bit. I can adjust how big or small the fog is and you can just play around to your heart's content with all the fog. Isn't that nice? It's like we're flying through the clouds, you know? That's nice. So that's basically how compositing works inside of Fusion. You know enough to be dangerous. But let's take this one step further because our footage is this drone shot that's kind of moving. It doesn't look very convincing to have the fog just staying right where it is. The fog should move a little bit, right? The fog should move around while we move around. Well, that's the cool thing about a compositing program like Fusion is you can do all kinds of fancy things like that and match the motion and all of that stuff. And generally what you wanna do for something like this is called tracking. I'll just bring up our original footage here. What tracking does is takes a look at part of our image, let's say this little part right here, and it thinks about how it moves and it tries to stick things to it while it moves. So why don't we do some tracking? Again, because each node has one job, we're gonna grab a tracker node. We don't have those here in the toolbar, but if you go up to the effects library, in the upper left-hand corner, we have a lot more tools that we can add to Fusion. And if I twirl down here to tracking, we can find something called tracker. Let's grab the tracker and drag that down into our nodes. And what we really wanna do is track our first footage. So we can take the output of our footage and just pipe it into our tracker like this. And I'll select the tracker. And now up here, we just need to tell it what we wanna track. So I'll mouse over this and just grab this little tracker. And we're gonna put these little crosshairs over something that is gonna happen throughout the shot. So I like this kind of golden leaf here. Maybe let's just put that right there and see how that goes. I'm selecting the leaf. I'm at the beginning of our shot and let's see if she tracks. I'm gonna go over here to the inspector with our tracker selected and click this button, which is track forward. So it's thought about all of that that took longer than it usually does actually, but if it worked right, we should be able to scrub through here and we should have our tracker pretty much stuck to our leaf right there. All it's done is just look at that little picture every single frame and try and stick that tracker right to it. Looks like we have a pretty good track there. All right, so now that we have everything tracked, we can actually just connect our fast noise to our tracker to move it around. So we'll take this fast noise and instead of connecting it to a merge, we'll connect it to our tracker We'll just get rid of our merge for now and get rid of our connections here and take the output of our tracker and put it into media out. So now we're just using the tracker instead of the merge. But with this tracker selected, I'm gonna go up here to operation and under operation where it says none, we're gonna select match move. That puts our fog over our background layer and it moves it around with that tracker. That's almost what we want. The big problem is we can see these edges here. So what we really need to do is make our fast noise layer a little bit bigger. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. Pretty fast, easy way is just to select this fast noise and click on this button right here, which will add a transform node. Transform just does exactly that, just transforms whatever node runs through it. So I'll select that and we'll just boost up the size here so that it's big enough throughout the whole shot so we don't see any edges. So now when we play this back, we can see the fog moves along with our camera movement which it's pretty subtle, pretty blurry, which we can change if we grab the fast noise, maybe change our scale a little bit, maybe it'll be a little bit easier to see. But we can see as we play this back, the fog moves along with the camera, pretty much just stuck to that part of the tree, but the effect totally works. And now we have our fog moving along with our camera, which is what we call in the business a composite. Pretty cool, right? So there we go, there's our fog moving along with our shot. You can dial it into taste, 
But that's that's the basics of compositing inside of Fusion. Putting stuff over something else, adjusting it to look nice, matching some movement. Oh, baby. If you want to learn more about Fusion, I have just a gigantic video on how all of the nodes in Fusion work, how to composite, how to do all kinds of stuff in Fusion. Check it out right here. Here's where it is. Oh, yes. Nice. Hmm. Look at that guy. Looks like he's playing on his phone, but he's probably flying the drone that we're looking at. 